Hello there, so let's move to the final tutorial. So these are scale resolver simulations, okay? It's the same previously. Uh, these are about resolving the scales of space and time it requires fine meshes, but also moving to an unsteady domain, okay? So they are very time consuming. So we have two cases now. So we're going to do the less square cylinder and the DNA is less channel. This is a classical validation case. Do not be afraid about the word DNA. okay? We're going to use a quartz mesh. And actually these, these references here are very old, but probably using a similar mesh that we're doing. So this is about computing statistics. So let me introduce the case to you. So here you have all the information to allow the cases. So basically this DNA channel is, is, this is what we're going to do. So what you see here, this is a fine mesh, okay? This is on about two or three million cells. So I don't recall. So you see that we're, res we're resolving very well. These structures here close to the wall. So this case is running a shear, uh, Reynolds number based on the shear velocity 590. So this is like 20 times to get the normal a Reynolds number, so it will be like 10,000 in central and flow. And we have these fluid properties with these domain dimensions, okay? So under these conditions, this problem, okay, this case have an analytical solution. The true stresses at the wall should be one Pascal, okay? And when we run the case and the measure that I'm going to give you, okay, the quartz one, you will see that there is an error about 10%. So this is very nice case because you can also see the, the influence of the mesh resolution in the end your solution okay so is you reduce the mesh and get something wall resolving because i'm giving you a wall modeling mesh you will see that those results likely will improve okay so these are our domain dimensions okay and here this is the, the mesh this is the fine mesh this is not the one that we're using so see that we have a good definition in all the directions okay and this is the solution that we have. So we're going to get a DNS and less. Okay, the setups are straightforward. We have seen in the theory that it's not like in runs that you need to take some assumptions here. You just set up the model and everything depends in the in the, in the mesh and in the in the in the time step. So see that solutions are very similar. Okay, and again we look at the DNS and less also very similar structures. Okay. So by the way, boundary conditions, what we have here, all these walls are periodic, so we have a pressure gradient, okay? So I will show you how to set up that pressure gradient and flow indicate setup. And it's usually engineer applications where we're not interested in instantaneous behavior, we're interested in average behavior. So when we average the solution, and remember when you do this stuff, you need to compute up a unsteady statistics, okay? It's not just Look at this, you need to enable on, st on the steady statistic. See that we have all these figures and see that there are some differences, okay, clear to the eye. Okay, so we have DNS less and run simulation. So there are some differences, but then when we look at the uh, the solution that we know that the wall should be one Pascal, see that the run solution is basically getting the exact solution, the right solution, okay? So the model can be crazy, it can kind of have been calibrated to get that. And then as you look at the on a steady statistic, okay, these are mean values. We have something that is your average will be about one Pascal, okay? But, but it's interesting that when we run the simulation, this runs will be incredibly fast. This one, you need to let it run for really, really, really long times. Okay, so this is the advantage, and this is why I mentioned that brands is still is the workers of, of Torrance model in CFD. Okay, so here we have uh, some, remember that to do this one, when you run this one, you need to do a lot of sampling. So here, for instance, you have the channel, you put a line there, and you start to gather all the information passing in this line or in probes and points, okay? So something like this. So by the way, here we're looking, this is a quartz mesh, okay? It still is finer than the one that we're going to use, but it's quartz than the previous results. But see that we're sampling these lines and we're gathering all the information. So look at the average profile here, and then you see the fluctuations in all directions, okay? So you have all, all the, well, here we have velocity magnitude and not plotting the fluctuations of the dimension, but all directions we're going to have fluctuations, and those fluctuations are, <clears throat> then using those fluctuations, we can compute the Reynolds stresses. And we take a look at the iterative convergence here, so DNA is and less and the theoretical value, see that, it is asymptotically approaching there. There is some difference, some some difference here, but probably 
about 80,000 80, iterations is taken to get to that value. Instead, the runs is just about 3,000 iterations already. We are in perfect accuracy, okay? So this is the advantage of using run simulations, okay? And here you have some timing. So when we compare also, we go and compare the values, is DNAs and less and runs, okay? So runs, say the error is 0%. Here is something about two, two percent, okay, five percent. So it's acceptable, but see that DNS is giving more error because it's due to the fact that we still need to have to use a finer mesh to resolve better this scale. Instead, here the less is just putting a small model there in the subgroup of scales and it's getting a better resolution. Okay, so this is the case that we're going to to run. We're going to run. We're going to show you the basic steps. But then you need to run let it run to compute the statistics. And the other thing that I want to show you finally is about what we want to plot about this. Okay, so remember from the theory that we have the Reynolds stress tensors and these are the fluctuations, okay? If you take the trace of this, you get the kinetic, Turing kinetic energy, okay? These fluctuations, you get it like this. Instantaneous values minus the mean quantities. So, so see that you need to enable these statistics to get this one. And then using this information, you just can you need to compute this. But to compute this, these are quantities that you need. These are custom fields that you need to enable on Fluium. I'm going to show you that. So you need to enable the compute this one and then compute these quantities, okay? Because by default, they are not computing by solvers. So when what you do, what can you do using this information? You can do these plots, okay? So these plots are very important. We have seen this in the theory, okay? So see that we have here the normal Reynolds stress is pure plus the Turing kinetic energy here. So you can do plus like this and see the behavior. And we have seen that the the boundary, the, the, the <clears throat> that the Reynolds stresses and Turing kinetic energy, energy tends to peak somewhere in the buffer layer. And see here, when you do this plus, when you get this data, you will see that you will get something similar, okay? By the way, to get something like this, you need to go wall resolving the mesh that you're going to use is the white plus is something about I think it's what we call 15 or 20. But then besides this kind of plot, okay, we can also plot the objects of the Reynolds stresses to recognize an energy dissipation rate. I already saw this a little bit in the theory. So we have the equations and each term of this, it, it is a different contribution. And again, you will need to enable the statistic for all these combinations of, of terms to do these objects, okay? But this will give a lot of information. But see, for instance, you will need to set up this triple correlation, also this correlation between velocity and pressure to, to, to start to, to plot this, okay? Also, you can do it for the Turing kinetic energy. So remember, you take the trace of this one and then you have Turing kinetic energy. And then for the dissipation equation, which is probably, I think, is the most complicated one, okay? So you have all these terms and you can compute this object. So again, just to remind you, this is putting uh, a line or probes and along these probes or line you need to gather the information okay so see that you have well here we have a mean solution just to show you mean solution and on the steady solution okay so see that this is part of the statistic okay so basically this mean solution is the average of this and here in this line or probes you are sampling the information everything that is passing there you are sampling that information there that you are going there to use to 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 do all these plots, these budgets. And here you have the reference. Okay, this is a very nice data set. Okay, remember that you have many data sets available online. This is very expensive to, to, to get it, okay, or to get with this resolution. Okay, so let's see about what we have here. And the idea is that one, okay, you start to sample in locations, you gather all your statistics, and I start to plot to do to plot your, your objects. And this is what when you plot the budget your budgets, this is what you do. So basically here I'm using this data, okay? I, I got access to this data and just plotting all the information here. Okay. So see that we have all the production, territory, well, and transport, viscous transport, pressure transport, dissipation. Okay, we plot all the turns and we see the evolution in function of the Y plus. Okay, so this is this gives you a lot of information what is happening and it's a source of validation. Okay, this is basically it's not a practical engineering application. It's something that that we use. Okay, simply just to develop models, cali calibrate models, or develop new wall functions or new equations to see the behavior close to the walls. Okay, so this is the plots that you can do. Okay, so this is probably the most important one, the one I show you also. 
this correspond to it will correspond to let me go here to at the beginning it will correspond to this one okay it's a very important one and probably instead of plotting all this budget i think that that is more than enough to get this one these are the Reynolds stresses so see that function y plus so here we have in the scale from zero to 100 and here is zero to 1000 and see what happens you have all your Reynolds stresses Okay, so see that U, U is the most energetic one, is the one that is going to give you the intensity. Then you have VV, WW in the other dimension, so just look at your reference system. Okay, these are the normal Reynolds stresses. And then we have this one, this is the one responsible of the mixing. Okay, so UV, and that is negative. Okay, we saw in the, in the theory that this one is negative. This is the one that is going to to generate the mixing, the shear, the shear in your boundary layer. Okay, so see that you have it negative, and then you have the other two contributions that they are very small. So often when you see this plot, many times that people doesn't plot this because they are very small here and plotting and multiplying by 100 just to see and see that it can be positive, negative, okay? And then you have the total kinetic energy that is somewhere in between you, you, and the others, okay? You have it here. So, and see that is Peaking in this case, peaking somewhere about 15 or 16. Okay, so this is, and this is the problem with the buffer layer. Okay, so the transitional layer is very energetic. We don't know what is going on there. So that's why when we're set, putting wall functions, we try to avoid to avoid this, this, this buffer layer. So we prefer to go here to the wall in the viscous layer or go more than certain that we are in the lot region. Okay, that is more uniform okay but this one is very it's very energetic and this behavior would change from physics okay probably this peak would move a little bit to the top to the bottom okay according to the physics so you have this very nice uh reference okay and here i just extract some plots so just to show you also this very complete that you have a very nice analysis so all these pl plots you can do so you can do different combinations okay for all your equations. But to do this requires that you need to enable all your statistics, okay? So for us, it, what is important is just to get this one. This is the one you can set up the, the others. So that's all that I wanted to show you, introduction of this case. So now, in the next video, we're going to, to move to the case setup and launching, okay? So as you see, it's a very simple geometry. It's just running the case, choosing the right time step and accumulating statistics, that's all. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. Bye.